So this will notify you about that. All right, awesome. Good morning, everybody. I'm Samantha Connor with the Boutique Hub. I'm the Director of Wholesale, and I'm excited to be uh, with you guys live in the members-only group this morning. Um, I brought some special guests with me, and um, we've got a complete panel, actually. We're going to be talking about the fashion diet, and um, our guests are from the Off Price Show. Um, just so if you're tuning in, coming in from a great weekend and you're like, oh, I don't want to talk about a diet, don't worry. The fashion diet has absolutely nothing to do um, with your diet, with food, if anything else. Um, this is going to be about the, the product selection that you've got in your store um, and how you can really make that a, a rich diet with products that um, are attractive and I'd say appetizing to any buyer. So um, to get started, I want to introduce to you uh, my friend Patrice. Um, Patrice is with um, Off Price. So Patrice, give us a little bit of an introduction and tell us um, about you. So I've been with Off Price for about three years and I work with the exhibitors for sales, but I also work with the buyers. So my background is I owned women's boutiques for about 10 years, two stores, and I was a buyer before that. So I totally understand where your audience is coming from in terms of buying and relate to it. And now I work on the other side um, in the wholesale part for trade show. Awesome. All right. And then let's go around the room and just introduce our guests. And then I want to come back and hear more about off price um, and okay. have you delve into that. So Patrice, will you um, introduce the guests that you brought on with our panel? Sure. We have Brandon, who's from d Merchandising. We have... Stanley from DM Merchandising, and then we have Anthony from Focus Fashion. And so we can start with Brandon. He is um, he is what you would consider a jobber, which makes up about 30% of our audience at Off Price. Yeah, Brandon. Hi, uh, Brandon Cooperman. Um, yeah, so we're based out of Chicago. DNL Apparel is our company. Uh, we're a small family business uh, that my dad started 45 years ago. Um, my sister joined us about three or four years ago, and I've been working uh, with my dad for almost 13 years now. So we specialize in name brand apparel for men, women, and some kids. Okay, awesome. Thank you. Happy to have you here. And then Thank we you. have Stanley, who I believe, Stanley, you describe yourself as elevated impulse product, correct? Yes. Well, this is just a small part of what we are. Yes. Uh, so what... I describe ourselves as more of a manufacturers and designers because mm -hmm. we kind of one-stop shop. We do our own design, we do our own manufacturing, we do our own, our own distribution. We do own a few brands under which we design, manufacture different product. We have the brands like Fit Kicks, Hello Mello, Kedzi, uh, Britsnitz, and all the different brands represent different product. So we have a uh, Impulse product, which we like to call elevated impulse, because uh, kind of everything is done to the store's liking. What I mean by that, that everything comes in a display, it's already pre-packaged. So for the uh, stores that are very busy and don't have enough staff, they don't really need to work hard on displaying that, that kind of impulse product. So this is kind of like, in a nutshell, what we are. So, And then... Anthony, you're a manufacturer, but more of Missy products, correct? Yes, ma'am. Uh, okay. We primarily specialize in natural fibers. Uh, so we do everything from the sourcing to fabrication. We work with a lot of different types of textures, starting from women's to French terries. Uh, even waffles would be kind of our niche bread and butter. Uh, we normally garment dye pre-shrink, um, majority of all of our garments because it goes through a wash process. Um, we're primarily a rep-based company. However, we attend off price because it's an amazing opportunity for us to kind of meet some new customers and, you know, uh, do some business and also like clean out some inventory as well. So <laughs> with yeah. some good deals. So that's why we're here. Great. We can't hear you, Samantha. There we go. Sorry. <laughs> I'm happy to have you guys all here. Um, so, you know, as we're talking about uh, markets and, we, you know, um, getting into market season again, um, I feel like we had a little bit of lull from, um, you know, June. Now it's July. Everybody's kind of taking a breath and we're getting ready for um, the August shows. So um, for those of you that are watching, if you have not been to Vegas, you're definitely going to want to lean in. 
um, record and um, pay attention to this um, conversation today because um, Off Price is part of that entire fashion week that happens in Vegas in August. And so, um, you know, those of you that are familiar with going to Dallas or Atlanta and you're familiar with just one show, the great thing about attending Vegas in August is you're going to get to see um, a variety of shows, which means you're going to be exposed to um, sourcing, to vendors, um, like I said, the Off Price. You're going to get the whole fashion diet, really, is what that comes down to. So, Patrice, give us a little background um on off price and um how long the show's been around and kind of what you guys specialize in so off price has been around since 1995 february of 1995 was our first show um we started at the debbie reynolds um hotel in a parking lot so i believe that we started with 12 companies and now pre-covid we were about 450 post-covid you know working our way back increasing every time i think we have 350 ish this show um so we've really grown, but we've really, we've been around for a long time. I mean, I think, Brandon, how long has your dad been coming to the show since then? I think, yeah, I think he started out the second show uh, that Off Price had. So, yeah. and we've been doing it twice a year ever since. Yep. So we have companies who've been with us from the beginning still. And awesome. It's, All right. it's a great place for people did you ask what it is, like what it is? The show yes, like yes. Like how does off price, um, for those people that are just tuning in, how is off price different than maybe if they're used to attending Dallas or um, another trade show? They've never been to off price. What are they going to find different with off price? You're going to see a lot of different things. So what you're going to see is you're going to see about three different buckets of um, exhibitors. So you will see, it, it can be overwhelming when you first walk in because you're going to see something different than you will at those shows. You might see grids. You're going to see lots of opportunities that might not be, the opportunity you're looking for, but you will also find opportunities to fit within your, in into your store. There's lots of boutique brands there. There's lots of people, which I think that these guys could probably speak to that, is that you're going to bring your product. It's not just all old merchandise, which people have to think, you have to get past that. It's going to be things that are possibly um, past season, maybe an over, an overcut of something, different colors. A lot of times we have the same product that an exhibitor is showing at Dallas at our show, but they might bring, you know, something that's six months past or some things that you can also find are, say, denim. Like denim companies cut the same style every season, but some seasons they might do it in a different dye lot. So you're going to be, get, you, you won't even be able to tell, but you, the consumer can't tell that that blue was last season because it's fairly different, you know, so you have a lot of opportunities to work into your store. Awesome. And that's what I really want. You know, when we talk about the fashion diet today and as we delve into this topic deeper and I see some people are just popping on. Um, we are with Off Price. We are talking about um, the Vegas show, uh, which will be happening next month and in August. Off Price is going to bring to you opportunity. That's the biggest thing that I want to stress. Um, and that opportunity comes to you in that form of margin builders, um, of accessing different um, you know, products that maybe your, your customer hasn't seen, but they're going to be excited about. And it's going to offer you an opportunity to make money on those. And yes. so um, really, as we talk about just in life, like as we said, with your the diet that you choose to eat, you know, you've got to have your your vegetables, your starches. And then it's fun to have some of that fast food that we mix in and um, some junk food and some other things along the way. Right. Everything's got a different a place, a different value. And same thing with um, brands and um, products that you've got in your store. You know, you've got your your anchor brands. Um, you've got things that people are going to make more of an investment in because maybe it's the higher product um, price point where you're not able to make as big of um, the margin isn't as big. And then you can also bring in products that maybe your customer hasn't seen, and it gives you an opportunity to really um, bring in something new and exciting, and then also make some money. And so that's really what this is about, um, this conversation a day. And so I really want to stress to all of our retailers that are watching, um, that if you have not been to Off Price, and you're planning out your Vegas trip, um, take notes because you're going to make sure that you hit up this show. So let's kind of delve more into um, the show and um, what we can can find out. So I noticed that um, earlier Brandon had said he described himself as a jobber. What's the difference between a jobber and a manufacturer off price? Yeah, um, kind of to put it plain and simple, we're a middle person uh, between our suppliers and the retailers. Okay. Um, because basically we're not producing our own products. We're buying direct from, you know, name brand companies. Um, and it kind of puts us in a small 
small little segment of off price, like Patrice uh, touched on, um, people come to us for name, name uh, brands. A lot of Nordstrom labels uh, that you'll find in Nordstrom's and it helps, it helps uh, sell recognizable labels because, I mean, easy put, they sell themselves a lot of times. Uh, Tommy Bahama, Levi, you know, they're world, worldwide uh, known names. Um, so it helps us, you know, separate ourselves. Awesome. And with those, you know, and I'm just, the question just popped into my mind. So if I'm a boutique coming to visit, I'm like, oh, Tommy Bahama, I've always wanted to carry them. Super exciting. Will I be able to get full runs of those products or is it going to be, um, what was that, that, that look like? Yeah, good question. Um, it's kind of nice because we carry a wide variety from each brand that we deal with. Uh, Tommy Bahama, we clean up their warehouse twice a year. So right. those items are going to be more assorted by category. Um, we always bring samples to the off price show to show what the assortment would consist of. Um, but then when you get into other labels that we carry, we do have a lot that are pick by style, pick by skew, full size runs. Um, so there's really good opportunity. Um, it's not necessarily, you know, a wide assortment uh, that people may think. There's a lot that, you know, what they see is what they get. Mm -hmm. Awesome. And then uh, when we talk about those products, uh, I know Patrice said that some of them are past season, some current season, some future. Um, what, where do you see the biggest opportunity? And I'll open this question to anybody. Where do you guys see the biggest opportunity with the, with, with a boutique? Should they be looking for past um, or should they be looking for future or does it not matter? They just need to find what their customer likes. What do you guys think? I think just the majority of people are just always looking for good deals, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, as long as the markups are there and the product moves in itself, right? Um, a lot of times uh, the product consists of a lot of basics, like whites, blacks, neutral colors as well. So they're always seasonless. Mm -hmm. Blue tones, you know, depending on type of how or like mm, the tone of the blue, right? It could kind of go either way from there as well. Um, but yeah, I think just off price, it's like, who wouldn't want it, right? It's just like, everyone's always looking for good deals, even as a consumer, right? Always, if there's a good deal, as long as the, you know, it hits the right price, I think, you know, customers are always going to be looking for something like that, right? So, well, yeah. you, touched, you touched on basics. And so I think that's a key point is that a lot of, like, you probably carry the same silhouette at our show that you carry at other shows, just in different colors, correct? Like Yeah, exactly. Because, yeah. like, we're primarily, like, a rep-based company, yep. right? So we pre-book, do majority of pre-bookings, right, with a lot of the reps. We introduce a new line per season. So we just introduce, like, a 2024 line that we're going to be showing at, at the wind show. However, at off price, we just take some of the items that are just already past seasons a little bit right but in terms of like silhouettes there's a lot of mm, recycled not i wouldn't really say recycled right just kind of just uh mm, timeless classics know. yeah timeless classics would be a better way to put it right you know just classic standard bodies that just do well year round and then from there because we're primarily a garment dye company so we'll use a silhouette for example like this t-shirt here and then we'll offer in almost like 12 different colors Right. So a lot of times, you know, when you're dealing with, you know, with reps, uh, you know, small little boutique shops here and there, you know, um, they're always looking for the new. But, uh, you know, what's always old can always be new again, depending on who looks at it. Right. So. <laughs> Um, yeah, and I would yeah. say with that too, when your customer has a favorite, I mean, I think all of us probably can relate to this. If you've got a favorite tea or a favorite, something that fits you just right, you want to buy it again and again. Yes, ma'am. Right. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Ma yeah. And it might be a new color to them, not an old color that they're saying to you. So they don't always want whatever the pop color, you know, whatever the newest color is. They might want, they might have loved the color that you have at another Yep, show. absolutely. Absolutely. That's where, you know, we'll actually bring everything to the off price show. And then, you know, you can pick from the litter, I always say. So. Um, you know, and a question I have about this too, because I think this is so helpful being able to talk to you guys. And this is what I always tell our boutique cup members is get to know the person that's in charge, the decision maker when you go to those booths. So, um, you know, we'll be there at off price. Um, Patrice, I'm bringing Sarah with me. We're going to come do a tour. I know you'll be there. Um, okay. Any boutique cup members that are, you know, watching this, we want you guys to walk with us, walk the floor with us so we can make these introductions. So we can say, hey, this is Anthony. Anthony, talk to us about basics and he can fill you in. This is Brandon. Brandon can talk to you about, you know, the, the power of the brand name. Um, 
everything in this industry, obviously, is who you know and who can really help coach you through these moments. And so um, going on that tour with us during um, the show and um, hearing this, you know, the expertise that you guys have to share, I think it's so valuable. Um, it's so much easier, too, than just walking into the show and being overwhelmed and walking out. You know, this will help you take advantage of that. Yeah, right. one thing, just ask questions um, mm -hmm. to anyone that you come across, because most people, you know, we're, we're here to provide input on the industry or our, you know, area of the industry, because um, it'll help people better understand, you know, what off price is about. Yeah, I love it. Always ask questions and people, you know, if you feel nervous, guess what? Everybody feels nervous. And so just put it out there. of, Hey, I'm new to this show. How does this work? Or, yeah. you know, whatever that is. There's no be. stupid questions. There's never stupid questions. You know? Yeah, you yeah. No, for sure. Um, awesome. So I'm looking through some other questions we have. Um, so as far as quality, uh, you know, Brandon, I heard you say these are, you know, name brand or Anthony, you said these are, you know, the same products that you're selling at the other shows. Um, what what can a boutique expect as far as when they're walking the floor at off price and the, and the quality of products they're going to um, see? Ours is all going to be first quality goods, just slightly a little bit older, right? Um, mm -hmm. Maybe a season. It can be anywhere from almost like mm, four seasons to now or even last season, depending on what we have, right? So we normally, since we run our own production, uh, we're going to have the highest mm, highest quality of QC, I would say, right? Uh, standards are very, very high on the QC plus the fit, right? I believe fit is definitely going to be one of the biggest things. So one of the things with our brand is going to be a consistent fit. And also at the best, I would say the best quality as well, you know, because we actually source majority of all of the fabrication by ourselves, controlled cut patterns, starting almost like a vertical integration in terms of starting from the fabric to the finished product. It's just sometimes we just cut a little too much, right? So, and we over, just overstock it, unfortunately. So that's kind of our situation. Which I think uh, is relatable. Yes, relatable to a boutique if they overbuy and then you're like, now yes, I'm yes, 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 yes. yes. <laughs> Stanley, you bring the same stuff to our show that you bring to your other shows, don't you? Absolutely, bring absolutely. The, the uh, major difference between the other shows and off-price show for us is that uh, the your regular gift shows that we bring the product to, we focus on everything new, on all the new designs, all the new colors. For the off price, we kind of go the opposite because just like uh, Anthony and uh, Brandon's mentioned, you know, we manufacture product every four, six months, new designs coming out. So that does not mean that designs that we had before, there is anything wrong with them quality is absolutely outstanding it just we tend to always focus on you and forget of about the uh, lost runs so this is where the opportunity comes in where people can get some uh, better pricing and mix it all in with uh, their regular merchandise mm -hmm. Careful. we kind of uh deal in variations of quality um in order, sometimes in order to open up with a new brand, you know, that we're trying to start a relationship with, we may purchase irregulars from them. But in any case, we always designate to the customer what they're getting. So there's no surprises. Um, because, for example, the Tommy Bahama warehouse cleanup we do, we go through in our warehouse and actually go through each piece, making sure that the customer is getting clean quality products. And then if we do come across items that may have a flaw, um, we have, let's say, flea market or, you know, higher discounted customers that buy those products. Um, we do carry a lot of first quality as well. Um, but at the off price show, every, all of our samples are ticketed, designating what the quality is. And that's so important, that transparency. Um, I think that's something that gives you guys that um, confidence to come shop off prices, knowing that if there is anything that's different, they'll let you know um, just really upfront. And I think that's a good question to ask um, when you're getting ready to go to off price um, and you're talking to these vendors, ask those questions, right? You know, where did the product come from? Was this an overstock? Is this, you know, like you said, is it a color issue? Um, is there something, you know, that there's an, an off with the, the style or something? And, and just to ask the questions and, um, you know, just hearing from Brandon, um, that transparency is very easy. You guys want your customers to be happy. You want them to come back to you. So you're happy exactly. to hear that information. 
Awesome. Okay, so another question I wanted to ask though um, was, are you seeing any shortages or gaps in the supply chain? So you guys are seeing a different side of the industry that maybe some of us are privy to. So um, what have you noticed? Do you see anything that uh, retailers need to be like, I need to buy this now because this may be a gap that's going to um, affect my business later on? So I'll just yeah. chime in real quick. Uh, sorry. Oh, please, please, um, please, please. So because we hold our own inventory at our company, we're always carrying merchandise. You know, we're buying our own products from our suppliers that carry us over, you know, month to month. Mm -hmm. um, so it's kind of a benefit when warehouses overseas were shut down uh, in 2020, we were still able to, you know, sell products on a regular basis because we, you know, we basically pre-buy uh, forecasting what we'll need going into an off-price show or going into the next season. Awesome. Um, that does give that, that, I guess, the confidence too for those uh, buyers as they come in to know that that, that product's going to be available to them. Just to add a little bit about that, I would say that the only product that I would strongly recommend for the uh, customers for the stores to focus on is seasonal. Because mm -hmm. once the seasonal product is sold out, it's impossible to bring it in again for us, especially because it takes about 60 to 90 days to bring something in. So if we're talking about the winter goods, once something is sold out for this season, it's, it's going to be gone. So if you don't want to ship it early, they can always uh, let us know when they want it to be shipped and we'll reserve the product for them. That's helpful. Uh, and when in August, what do you recommend as people are is preparing for the show? What should they be looking to purchase in August? Uh, I, I would suggest uh, winter goods for stores that are uh, in on the north side of the country and uh, some kind of, you know, because like, for example, the winter hats and gloves that we sell. I know stores in St. Augustine Island in Florida that buying them uh, through the winter and sometimes even through the summer as a gift. So it's really hard to say uh, which which stores or which territory will focus on something, but definitely seasonal product, whether it's a Christmas or Halloween that yeah. some stores carry, definitely I would recommend to focus on that earlier. You yeah. have great products for holiday. You have great gifts. You have great gifting things for people for holidays. Thank you. Well, and something to point out too, as we head into these August shows, um, obviously, like I said, our team will be in Vegas and this will be, you know, fashion week there with all those shows. And then of course, Dallas and Atlanta as well. Um, what we're really encouraging retailers to look for are those things to bring in for doorbusters for Pink Friday. Um, and Pink Friday, of course, is our um, the boutique hubs event. It happens the Friday before Black Friday. Um, and it's a way to support small business. And so I know that it, a lot of our retailers are going to be looking for um, those margin building um, opportunities uh, with products, things that can be used as giveaways, stocking stuffers, um, you know, promotions that they can be doing. So um, off price would really be a good partner um, with those uh, Pink Friday deals. All right. So um, moving on, what right now, um, best selling categories, like what are the, the top things that are really um, you can find it off price when you're looking for those best selling categories. Is it apparel? Is it outerwear? Is it the, the gift items, accessories? What, what are you guys seeing trending wise? I think we see it. I mean, what I've seen for in terms of categories that are selling for, we do a lot with um, accessories are huge for us. It's a great mm -hmm. place for people to come for accessories. Um, cash and carry can be a great area for them. But on top of that, I mean, uh, across the board all of our categories i think have been strong women's apparel uh scrubs i don't know if anybody's into scrubs we've had a lot of scrubs gift is always big with us too um i don't know what else have you seen in your cat i mean you i i might want to add that uh, what's been very popular is the personal care lines Oh, okay, okay. Whether, whether it is for the boutiques or gift shops or your department stores uh, many people utilizing the queue line for that and this is where your uh, smaller accessories and personal care product uh, doing very well, because this is in a way what it would became of impulse. Mm -hmm. Impulse used to be more of, a, of this useless gifts that people pick without thinking. And yeah. then now, now that impulse became this your personal care, whether it's the pill boxes or brushes or uh, hair ties. So this yeah. is what, what became of that. 
it's an easy add-on to a sell. So for somebody who owns a store, that's an easy add-on. Those things, those price points that are under twenty dollars are easy to add, to add up your sales, especially when they have a good margin. Yes, yeah, for sure. Put those at the cash wrap. Um, I know mm -hmm. that a lot of our stores are really focusing on that in-store experience, and mm -hmm. so for the holidays, we talk about Pink Friday, then they fit, you know set up like a stocking stuffer bar. Um, or things like you said that they can bundle together um, to make really cute gift ideas where it's like a shirt and then some personal care or whatever that category yeah. is. Um, one thing I was surprised to hear you say is that you guys do carry home and gift. I don't think I saw that last time. So that's something to note about off price is that you've got women's apparel, men's apparel, kids, outerwear, uh, accessories, and then also home and gift. Yep, we've expanded. I mean, we're, we keep expanding every show, our home awesome. and gift lines. They're just okay. keep getting bigger and you know yeah there's I think that that's such a growing trend with apparel companies people who own boutiques especially have added that home and gift so mm -hmm. it just makes sense with us being an apparel based show to add that to our show because it makes it easier when people are shopping the shows to have multiple categories within one show right and it's what we're seeing with those boutiques they want to be yeah. a one-stop shop so if I come in yep. and get my jeans, I also want to get a present for my grandma or, you know, however that works out. Same thing. If mm -hmm. I'm going to come to off price and shop at Vegas, then I would like to be able to hit all the categories. So that's nice to hear. Yeah. And that's there's a lot of, more uh, at our, oh, go ahead. Sorry. That's kind of what um, we've evolved in since I've started, you know, working here. Um, we've always been known to carry a wide variety of denim jeans. Denim's never going to go out of style. Um, but mm -hmm. Throughout the last six or seven years, we've added accessories like Patrice touched on. So now we carry belts, wallets, hats, shoes, uh, kind of for that customer that's looking for a well-rounded display of a brand. Mm -hmm. I like that. All right. So texting on, we kind of now know what we can we know what we can find at off price. Um, why these are great opportunities. I wanted to talk about just kind of some shifts in the market and retail trends. I always think that's interesting when we get a group together like this, because you guys, like I said, see so much. So um, what do you guys think right now? You know, I mean, the economy is always a hot topic when we talk to retailers and wholesalers alike. What are you seeing, um, Patrice, some of the biggest threats um, for a retailer in today's economy? What, what should they be aware of um, going into this next buying season? I think what's top what's been tough for retailers is the internet i mean online i think is tough when you have a brick and mortar um it's somewhat of a race to the bottom and then the big box retailers you want to make yourself different and special in a boutique so it's finding that perfect balance of making yourself special but competitive in the market which i think is off price is very helpful it's more than just like a black friday like doorbuster type thing is that you can take your products that you are featuring out that aren't discounted and you can fill in with those. So you can buy, you know, sweaters or basics that are you're buying from your name brands, but you also need a filler because you need those products are eventually going to go on sale because they you're not going to always sell through all of them. So you're going to start losing money on them. So you need to have product that can kind of balance each other and you can make your money on your margins and stuff like that. So I think it's basically what I think, and I could be wrong, is that it's the internet um, and your big box retailers trying to race to the bottom. They're going to undercut you. Yeah. So what is that balance then of um, in a store when, you know, our um, our boutiques are coming to Vegas, they're going to hit the shows, they're going to come to off price. What should be that balance of um, discounted merchandise that they're purchasing and full price merchandise? What do you think? Where's the sweet spot? It depends on your um, location. I think that anywhere from off price should be anywhere from 15 to 20% of what you are putting into your store personally, what I think can work. Um, and that way you can still be true to like, if you don't want to look like it, well, I don't even want to say that. So I think you have to fit your fit the discounted product in with your future goods and what looks new. You want to keep your floor fresh. So you can also use off price by keeping your floor fresh because your flow of inventory can be can be more sustainable because you can utilize your open to buy dollars more and have more volume coming in at a time. And it doesn't, that's one thing I had a, when I first went to off price 15 years ago as a buyer, I had a different look at it. I was like, oh, wow, this show's not for me. And then fast forward, I started working there and like, I missed out on so many opportunities. There are so many opportunities in here that I really should have 
taken the time to look for. And it's honestly just walking into the show and like anything else, not a, there's going to be things that aren't going to be right for you at every show you attend. And it's just taking advantage of the education we're offering, taking advantage of the tours, things like that to really learn what it is that we have. And we've evolved since 1995 and have a lot more elevated brands and products and quality and things like that. That's so smart. Um, I really like that information. And I like that you said this is a, it's like we talked about again, the diet, it's the fashion diet of you have a variety of things on your plate, a variety of things in your store. And those just bring opportunities for your customer and for you. And like I said, everybody's looking for a deal. So that's also yeah. helpful. And if I may add just one more thing to yeah. that, uh, also, the opportunity buys give the great opportunity for the store itself to show the uh, appreciation of a customer. Mm -hmm. So that's where you can uh, mark the product up to your full retail and give them 20% discount, still making yeah. your markups. Mm -hmm. yep. And then yeah, the right. store looks good that they are offering something for the consumer. Yeah. yeah. And everybody feels like they win. That's one of the ways to battle the internet, if you will. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Wonderful. Okay. Um, so as we um, keep going through this, I know I've got some different questions that are popping up. Um, and then one of the things I think you kind of just touched on was how um, products from off price can help retailers meet consumers' needs. Um, so the consumer at this point, you know, with our economy, sometimes maybe they're not able, like we said, to buy the fabulous dress they wanted that was full price or, um, you know, the shoes and that kind of thing, but they still want to make that purchase. Gifting is still a huge trend. Um, what are you guys seeing? How can um, the products at Off-Price help meet those consumers' needs? I think what's nice is that you have, so everyone has their open to buy dollars. Mm -hmm. And sometimes everything in our show, and correct me if I'm wrong, but you guys, you have ATS. Like that, you guys can ship it out when you get back from the show, right? Because a, a lot of people don't have those products ready to go. So that can help people stay within their dollars without getting caught you know, they can go to the show, know what they have, get it shipped immediately and into their store, which is huge when you're, you're buying closer these days to your open to buy dollars versus, you know, taking big risks. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead, Samantha. Sorry. Oh, I was just going to touch on. So everything that you, that idea of I'm going to buy it now, and then it's going to be available for me to sell and make money on right away. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. Stanley kind of touched on it earlier too. Like at the shows, we'll, we'll book, you know, future deliveries. Um, but it is helpful that what someone, you know, sees in our booth, they can, they can have it shipped at any time. Um, because we're not, you know, waiting for deliveries into our warehouse, everything we show we own. So it, that, that part of it is, is helpful. Yeah, that really helps that buyer's confidence for sure. It also gives them thing. some wiggle room, right? It just gives them some yeah. wiggle room to kind of play with their dollars, right? So I think that's probably one of the best perks. And also, mm -hmm. just like they can take it when they want. You know, it just right. takes like the mental stress of the financial aspect of like pre-booking, et cetera, and trying to plan your mm -hmm. season out. You know, that can be pretty daunting, especially when, you know, the overall economy and, and the status of it. Uh, plus, you know, with fast fashion online, right? The competition is just absolutely crazy, right? So you know, so I think it just gives them a little bit, you know, a little bit of wiggle room would be the best way on my end, the way I would put it, I guess. And in the end, you know, the three of us are small businesses and ourselves, um, you know, in a respect. So not speaking for everyone, but we're easy to communicate with, you know, if, if, so, if someone at the show comes in, you know, and they need to push an order back a couple of weeks, you know, there's no problem, you know, for DNL to, accommodate you know we're here to to try and help you know the small businesses the small boutiques um you know in any way that we can i think that's an important part though in terms of with your is keeping your um lines of communication open with your exhibitors and when if you need to push it back communicating that versus you know just not answering the call when you're calling to say it's ready to ship or something i think the best way to stay in touch with your to want the exhibitor to sell to you is to really have that relationship where you communicate because that's how you're gonna you're gonna keep it going and be able to continue booking those brands and things. Yeah, at the end of the day, I mean that we hit stress that so much is that it is all about relationships and 
Mm -hmm. um, when you continue to build that, that's what's really going to make your store successful. Um, online, brick or mortar, or whatever it is, it's those relationships that you have with your customer and the relationships that you have with your vendor. And um, really, like I said, bringing in a variety of products um, that are interesting. It helps also set your store apart um, to have unique merchandise that maybe not everybody else has. You know, nobody wants to look like the boutique right next door to them. And so to, to be unique and curated like that, um, off price really helps you with that, that opportunity. Um, as we're coming into market, um, let's talk about some tips for shopping off price. Um, so we're a boutique. We've been watching this. Now we're convinced. We're going off price, um, adding it to our show list. Um, how should um, our boutiques prepare um, to come to off price? Do they need to make appointments? I think that's probably one of the very first questions people want to know. Do I need to make an appointment? Well, for us, no. Uh, just walk, stop on by if you find anything you like, and hey, start picking. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> we'll have some good deals. Um, hopefully make it a little bit exciting. And then from there, it's just, you know, yeah, we just love to see your faces. And, you know, you have to browse, right? Mm -hmm. And also, you know, prepare to do a little bit of walking, right? <laughs> but um, you just have to kind of browse. And then if you browse, you'll find definitely most likely something that you'll be interested in. And then from there, you know, who knows? I always say test the product put in the store, see if it moves. And then from there, the reorder game is always going to be mm -hmm. where we try to perform on our end, the reorders. So um, that's kind Actually of a, have, uh, uh, a lot of customers who will stop in um, customers that have been buying from us for 10 plus years will come into the show the first day, take some notes, you mm -hmm. know, look through everything, walk the show, get a good feel for what else is out there and then come back the second day, uh, you know, to book an order. So, you know, there's no, no pressure, no rush. You know, if you're in a booth, you know, take your time, ask questions like we touched on before, um, but take notes and then you can look over what was of interest for you. I think it's important to, cause it is fashion week and, you know, you go back and forth to all the shows. Ours starts a couple of days early. I think it's, come early to the show, walk the whole, whole show and really know what we're about, you know, because I would come on Saturday or Sunday and make sure you walk the show and see what it is that we have to offer. And yeah, do you let um, buyers take notes? Like, can they take notes and not have to order right away so that they don't feel like, you know, sometimes I think it's if you're a buyer, you can go in, you can take notes, and then you can go back and see if you have the dollars to buy it and then say, okay, I want to buy it. I mean, there's lots of different ways that you can do it. But also from our show standpoint, I would take advantage of our our um, website and we have all our exhibitors will be listed on there and they all have portals. And so do a little bit of homework, do your research, see what their product is, make them a destination on your when you're at the show so you you know a little bit what they're about and see what you know strikes your interest they should all have their portals filled out they don't all have their portals filled out, but they should have their portals filled out yeah I mean, yeah it's like going to the grocery store i mean back to the food analogy with the diet if you go to the yeah. grocery store and you don't have a list you're going to end up putting a lot of stuff in your cart and then getting home and saying oh i didn't get eggs i didn't get milk you know those things that i need so um, I think it is important to, you know, take stock of your inventory before you go to the show, make a list of what you're looking for. Um, if you've never, like we said, carried off price, this is your opportunity um, to really look for those margin builders. But um, I do want to encourage everybody, there is no pressure to write an order in the booth the first time that you're there. Yeah. Um, mm. These guys don't want you to do that either because they don't want you to cancel the order. You know, right. we, you want the sell in and you want the sell through. So yeah. the, you just, them just taking the order is not the success that they're looking for. They want, like I said, the reorder is the actual the long term game um, for you both to grow incrementally together. Um, and so, you know, start small, take in what you can and then see how it does and then reorder and, and come back. But um, just in general, when you attend trade shows, there is no pressure um, from any uh, let's say, of our boutique hub brands that we work with. They know they don't want to pressure you. They want you to be successful, to feel comfortable with your order for sure. Um, other things we talk about with those orders. So once they're ready to place those orders, um, what kind of like criteria are you looking on? Is there things that's, um, do we have like zip code protection or minimums or um, kind of explain that with your brands and how that works with each of you guys? Well, with us, um, normally, of course, we're going to always have to protect, right? The customers mm -hmm. that are around, right? We're not going to be selling to everybody, right? It just kind of takes the novelty out of it. 
but also it's a relationship game, right? Mm -hmm. um, that's kind of like what I believe, right? So, because we have we have some accounts that have been with us almost like 25 years because our company has been around for 30 years, right? So, you know, um, I, you know, I think loyalty goes a long way. Mm -hmm. You support them, they come back to support you and just kind of goes full circle on that end. Uh, minimums wise for us, normally it's going to be like a small, medium, large, extra large. We do small through extra large with the true Missy full, thing, like a full cut. Mm -hmm. um, but for the show, we're going to try something a little bit different with some pre packs. Uh, but the prices, I think, were going to be kind of interesting. And we might have some show specials. We're kind of working on maybe like a free freight program right now. I'm in discussion with my team right now. But yeah, stop by and then uh, ask, I always say. And then, hey, Maybe you might get lucky. <laughs> Stanley, go ahead. Yeah. All right. <laughs> I was I was waiting. Didn't want to jump in. <laughs> so uh, I I would agree with Anthony. Just don't don't be afraid to ask. We all will have some kind of special, whether it's the product or uh, any kind of offer. If you guys uh, have your credit sheets, we might be able to offer you some extended dating or anything that in that term related. Uh, as far as the minimums, our minimums on a product, on a brand vary between uh, two pieces to 168 pieces, depending on what it is. If we're talking about a set of jewelry that might be 168 pieces, but that would be 57 different pieces in there that you can reorder afterwards in multiples of three. If we're talking about some uh, something per size, it's going to be just as low as two pieces. And uh, as far as the dollar amount, we don't really have a minimum on the dollar amount. And once the people stop by the booth, they will understand why, because it's almost impossible not to order pretty much everything and a little bit of uh, every possible brand that we have. So yeah, stop by, ask the question, we'll find an answer. Wonderful. As far as our prepacks, um, we pretty much prepack in 12, 18, or 24. Um, like Stanley touched on, we don't have minimums either. We have some customers that buy one case of something, um, you know, and that's totally okay with us. Uh, it helps. It helps get a customer, you know, in our door um, and start the relationship. Um, prepacking in small lots, 12, 18, 24 for us is kind of how we pitch our suppliers uh, to trust what we do with the product. Mm -hmm. So we don't necessarily restrict uh, zip codes like you talked about, um, but it helps us, you know, limit visibility, you know, for our suppliers so that they trust, you know, where we're putting the goods. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that protects the brand for sure. Uh, you know, and another question I had too, was I was thinking about this, uh, you know, when you go to a show, especially I feel like off price is such a nice curated selection and it does feel homey, you know, where you can talk to everybody as you're, you know, walking through the show. If I'm a boutique and I bought from Brandon last season and then this season, I'm not going to buy from him. How do I keep that relationship going? What, what would you want from a customer at that point of, you know, is it walking by at the folder in front of my face or is it, Hey, Brandon, <laughs> <laughs> I love that, but but I I, yeah, I keep my doing? eyes I keep my eyes on the aisles so I'll still see that. Okay, yeah. <laughs> that's be a big folder. <laughs> yeah. yeah uh, what, no, what do you even guys like for that relationship. What do you want the boutiques to do? Come stop say hello. Say Why hello. not? Yeah. 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 It's, yeah. it's it's always good to see you know your faces etc. Right. So hey, yeah. the products. You know, hopefully next time. Right. If it's not working out for you this time hopefully next time we might have something for you right so hey never be afraid to stop by and say hello right yeah show us your beautiful smiles and hey you know let's have some fun i always say right one thing i want to add to that is uh, uh, sorry brendan uh one oh, thing i want to add to that we do want to know for for example like if there is you you're not bought from us once and you haven't bought from us again we want to know because we are insecure people we think that we've done something wrong. Okay. So we want to know how we can fix that. So if there is, a, if there is an issue, we want to know. If this is uh, just like Brandon and uh, Anthony mentioned, if you buy in one year from here, one year from there, that's perfectly understandable. But we do want to know if there is some kind of issue that we need to fix. Because it's all human made. We are human. Any, anything possible. 
Thank That's you. a really good point. Yeah. Um, same thing because uh, if, if you don't care about, you know, that something didn't work out for you or you didn't like how it came in, didn't fit properly, whatever the case may be, if we don't hear about it, like you said, there's no way for us to know. Or And we're here to fix the issue if there is an issue. You need yeah. that open communication. Yeah. It goes back to me of that same relationship of as a boutique owner, how would you want your customer, you know, if your customer hadn't been in the store in a while, if there was something that went wrong, let them know. But, or just sometimes just come in and, you know, like you said, maybe they don't have what they want right now, but continue to come in, say hi, keep that relationship going. Mm -hmm. And also, also don't be afraid to let us know what you're looking for. Yeah. Is again, we all are bringing new product in uh, every quarter, sometimes even uh, every month. So we might, we might want to bring something that you're actually looking for, whether it's a color or a specific product. Yeah. And I like I that. Think, too. Yeah. Uh, letting them know what is it you want. Yeah, I have some customers that will say, hey, um, you know, this brand has done well for me in the past. Like, have you ever had, you know, contact with them or tried to, you know, start a relationship? And there's actually been a couple that, you know, after a year or so, uh, six months um, that a customer brought up, you know, a new brand that I wasn't too familiar with that we give mm -hmm. it a try. It actually works out pretty well. Yeah, feedback is huge. And like you said, you want to bring in what they want to buy. Just right. send what you want and I'll get it. <laughs> <laughs> within reason, within reason. <laughs> awesome. Well, we are coming to the end of our time. Um, I am going to go ahead and drop because I had some people ask questions on um, just the location of the show and things. So I've got that information uh, that I'll put in our Facebook group um, to share. But um, for those of you that are listening, obviously, um, you're going to be at the Venetian. So um, Patrice, give us the sales pitch. Where can we find off price? What are the dates? We are at the Venetian, August 5th through the 8th. We are 9 to 6, uh, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, 9 to 3 on Tuesday. And we uh, also have a boutique hub tour. When's the tour? Which day? I've got the tour. Four o'clock. Okay, four o'clock. Four o'clock on Sunday. Four to six on Sunday. Yep. Yes. Awesome. And for our boutique hub members that are attending this show, um, you are basically VIP at off price. Um, when you come to register, there will be a boutique hub hot pink circle that you're used to seeing everywhere. Um, and so that's your, your friendly introduction. And that's the big thing that we always say about being a member of the Boutique Hub is um, it gives you that relationship right away. So um, you can go to that desk. I'm with the Boutique Hub. I'm here to shop. You know, whether it's your first time to off price or you've been before, um, they can help direct you and make sure that you're getting the most out of the show in terms of tours. I know you guys have some happy hours, um, some education yep. opportunities. Um, so they can get all that information from your info desk as well. And we're happy they'll have, we have both my number and Audrey's number. We're happy to help with any questions pre-show, you know, what vendors might be of interest to their store, but we're happy to help them with whatever they need. Yeah. Awesome. Well, I appreciate you guys coming on here. Um, I feel like uh, Vegas in general can kind of be mysterious uh, just because it is so big and it can be overwhelming, but um, you guys definitely help break it down and um, put a face to the show as well and um, let our boutiques know um, all the opportunity that um, lies within off price. So thank you guys so much. Awesome. Thank, thank you for hosting. Thank, thank you. Us. We're looking forward to August. Yes. I will yes see I'm going to pull it. <laughs> awesome. We'll see you at the show. All right. All right thank you guys. You. All right, bye. Pleasure. Have a great day. Thanks.